The Year of the Rabbit Silver Round. I debated to make this the Easter Bunny corn ring, but I have to think evergreen content. So I decided to do this video after the holiday. I made a ring from this round early this year. It was a medium band that just displayed the 12 animals of the Chinese Zodiac. I thought it would be a nice way to show variety of this beautiful design of this round. The reverse side of this silver round is awesome. And this ring I'm making now will display more of its detail. I found out that some people like to see all the details that a coin a round has to offer. That's the beauty of a round, the variety. I've never seen one like this. You made it this far in the video, hit the like button. It helps me to get more views. Okay, back to the coin ring story. I've done a recent poll on my community tab. I wanted to know how stackers of precious metals chose to buy their silver. I gave three choices. One being coins or rounds, two coin rings, etc. Three junk silver. Now I was surprised that the number one answer wasn't coin rings, but <laughs> the majority voted 72% thought that coins and rounds were the best choice. 22% thought junk silver was a good choice. And 6% thought that rings and pores and etc. was the third choice. Now it's my job to get at least one coin ring in every household in America for those who stack precious metals. So this poll kind of helped me did that so it lets me know what people want so for the next person who purchased a coin ring from me you will get a silver quarter now that takes care of two things on the list you get a nice silver ring to wear and you receive a silver coin the best of both worlds Okay, let me know what you think in the comments of that offer. Precious metals is a great way to reserve your hard earned money in financial distress times. Something you can hold and own and even pass down to your loved ones. Coins and rounds have been collected for many years. Coin rings are a way to wear your favorite coin, no matter if it's gold or silver. I've heard stories of rings being given as gifts to grandparents, then passed down to grandkids, then maybe even given to their kids when they grow older. Corn rings are personal, something you can truly cherish. Think about this. You present your stack of precious metals to your son or daughter. Then in a separate box, you present them with the ultimate collection piece your ring. You wore this ring when you went to work day after day. You wore this as you searched thousands of coins for errors and varieties. This ring was your everyday carry. You never took it off. Now is the time to pass it to the next generation. Now tell me this isn't a great reason to get a coin ring. Last year, I had a young lady request that I turn a 1955 nickel to a hair bead. This nickel belonged to her late father. He had this nickel in his Bible. She stumbled across it when she was gathering his belongings for the last time. She requested that I turn it to a bead that she can wear every day. People will find a way to remember loved ones. I was so happy to help her. Now that I let off a little steam, let's get to the step that I use to make this corn ring. To protect the detail of your corn ring, I use this plumbing tape I purchased at Home Depot. It's called Monster's Tape. To protect the ring with this before you force the ring in this next process called the Swedish Wrap. It is important to have symmetry when making your corn rings. 
So you see me here pressing the ring down the Swedish wrap. This caused the walls of the corn ring to collapse and also to reduce. You wanna make sure that the ring creates a perfect symmetry going down the tube. Once you get to this step, it's now to reduce the cut edge and the reeded edge. I always start with the reeded edge down. I reduce that with my 17 degree die. This gives me a nice slight bevel. Then I rotate the ring and I do the same thing with the cut edge. You wanna reduce that size as well. This corn ring will be around a size 10 and a half to 11. I use this size as an example because it allows me to show the detail of the coin. When you make sure you have a thick, chunky band, no detail is hardly lost. I have big fingers, so I like a big, chunky ring. A small band makes my fat fingers look even bigger, but this chunky ring fits perfect. But you wanna make sure before you give it to the customer that both ends are reduced to give it a nice symmetrical look. As you see here, you see the chunky band near the reeded edge, but when you put the ring on, it doesn't hit the knuckle, but it's a nice thick fit. The next step is to refine it a little. I wanna make sure that I shine up all of the rough spots. But before that, I deburr the inside and also the outer edge, which is the cut edge. I take some sandpaper to smooth out the rough spots because I wanna make sure that the ring is very comfortable. And what my hands can do, I pull out my trusty drill. So I want you to cover your ears for the next step because it's gonna be a little loud and I don't want you to have any discomfort, okay? So this step right here, I take a couple grits of sandpaper to smooth out the cut edge rim, and then I turn the ring around to smooth out the um, cut edge as well. So first the reeded edge, then the cut edge. Okay, now that that is done, you see how it's smooth, it's shining. I put a little polish on the ring, just a little bit, to show the detail and the ring fits like a glove. A beautiful ring, it's about size 10 and a half, can go as high as a 13 or even 15, depending on the size of the finger. But you'll have a beautiful ring that displays all 12 animals of the Zodiac. I thank you so much guys for checking out this video. If you like one of these rings, check out on my website, I'll put it there. If you like any ring made, leave it in the comment or email me at jtcornrings at gmail.com. Guys, I will see you next video. Thanks for joining me for this journey.